Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, it's because I just filmed a back to school makeup tutorial. So please ignore the hairband and the weird pigtails because I know they don't suit me. They're not cute. I tried and I failed. So in today's video, I thought I would try and give you guys some advice. A lot of you have been really, really supportive of me and my YouTube channel. So I thought this is just a nice way to kind of like give back to you guys. I've had a bunch of questions, whether it's like, advice on makeup, relationships, life advice and everything sent in to me by you guys and I'm just going to be going through all of those and answer them. Also if you did not submit anything for this video and you want advice on anything please feel free to either DM me on Twitter or message in the comment section below and I will reply to every single one of you. Okay, so the first question is to do with a relationship. So this person says what would you do if you weren't sure on your relationship? It's been nearly nine months now but I've recently not felt the same for the person I'm with as I have in the past. Is it worth us being together? She has a really nice family and everything, but I feel like I've changed. If you're a teenager or something and this is one of your first relationships, then I understand like you might be really worried about maybe breaking up with them, but really as you get older, you realize nine months is not a long time to be with someone. And I feel like for me anyway, if I was already having doubts that early on, I'd probably be thinking maybe I shouldn't be with this person just because I feel like that's sort of the honeymoon stages if you're already like kind of not sure how you feel about them. I don't really think it's fair to stay with a person if you're not feeling 100% committed to a relationship. And also it might just be a fact that like you've grown on from that, you feel different, you want to do new things, you want to like experience new stuff and you're just maybe growing as a person. And that's not a bad thing, it happens all the time, it's completely normal. So don't feel like if it doesn't feel right for you that you have to stay in a relationship because you definitely do not. Personally, I would probably give it another month or so if you're still feeling like you're very unsure about your relationship. I would kind of advise you to break it off and just be really, really honest with the person that you're with and say like, hey, um, it's nothing to do with you, but I just don't feel the same anymore. I feel like that would be the most fair thing to do. But like I said, like only really you know yourself what you want. Okay, another person said that I love to wear makeup. I have really, really dry skin on my face. And whenever I use concealer or foundation, the skin begins to flake and I end up giving up on makeup. Is there any brands that you would recommend for super dry skin? Okay, so my sister gets this issue quite a lot because she has like a lot more of a dry skin type whereas I'm very oily so I'm probably not the best person to ask. However, if you are having a lot of issues with like dry skin around your face, I would say try and find a moisturiser that's really, really good for you, especially to use at night time because that's when your skin does a lot of the repairing. I mentioned this in my skincare video recently, the Nip and Fab moisturiser, absolutely incredible, I would highly recommend that. Um, also check out the range from The Ordinary because they will show you which is kind of best for dry skin. They have like different sets as well. I'd recommend using like niacinamide, salicylic acid, aloe vera gel, and just kind of focus on repairing your skin before you pile more makeup on top of it. Also drink lots and lots of water because dehydration is the main key of dry skin. In terms of makeup products though, I would recommend you checking out Nicole Concilio because she has really dry skin and she always has like a bunch of makeup products that she recommends for people with it. This person says, I have a really round face and pointed nose. I've always struggled to find a contour pattern that works for me. What would you recommend? Okay, so when it comes to contouring, you shouldn't just like kind of look at what other people do and think, oh, okay, they've done that, I'll do it for my face. That's what I used to do when I first started doing it. And I was kind of like, well, why does my contour look good, you know? And it's because it's not for my face type. So I would say if you have a more rounded face, you want to focus on bringing out your cheekbones, chiseling your jawline, and kind of just pulling everything together. If you're sort of face shape, I would focus contouring on the tops of your cheekbones there. Try and do it a little bit above your actual contour line, because this is where I would contour. But if you're more of a rounded face, you want to be focusing it right on the top, and that would just help to lift your face up a lot more. I would also focus the contour around your jawline here, and that will kind of help to like tuck that in a little bit, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, as for the nose, again, contour that. Pretty much the same for every nose type. You just draw two lines down here, a little bit at the bottom, and just, yeah, just blend. <laughs> also, another really good thing that you can do if you're not sure what face type you are for contouring is if you go on Pinterest and type that in, then there's a 
bunch of like pictorials on that for different face types it'll show you like the areas that you should typically contour depending on your face shape next one is i need help with talking to girls what do girls look for in boys okay so the first thing i would say is just be yourself i know it sounds really cliche and really boring but that is honestly the only way you're going to get through it girls can tell straight away most of the time especially as they get older if you're faking who you're being like or anything like that so like we can just see straight through it so definitely be yourself the main things i would say from my personal experience is like being funny just being able to like make you smile and stuff like that like some being around someone who uplifts you and really helps you feel a lot more confident than you probably actually are that's definitely my key thing but honestly just be yourself if you like a girl maybe chat to them a little bit get to know them first and if you really like them ask them out the worst thing they can do is say no and yeah it might be a little bit embarrassing at first but trust me you'll get over it because like there's a billion other people out there like if one doesn't work out another one will so don't worry about it you'll be fine so how do you get lashes on properly and do winged eyeliner okay so it's kind of awkward to show you if you guys want a specific tutorial on this please do let me know and i'll do one for you um eyelashes i tend actually I'll use my Jeffree Star mirror. This is one I bedazzled. I think it looks really cute. So I used to do a glue and you can kind of tell when it's about to go tacky because the glue will kind of turn like a lightish blue colour. So I will place my mirror here, kind of look down into it and put it on top like that. So you're not like looking directly into the mirror because you're not going to get it directly on top of your lash line. But if you look down into it, you can see where it's going and you'll get it a lot closer to your lash line. And I kind of just plop it on in the middle and then wiggle it about until it fits. And that's how I do it. Mainly, I think it's just the angle that you get it in. In regards to a winged liner, I'd say using a pen is definitely the easiest. I really like the Fenty liner, the Kat Von D tattoo liner. Um, there's one by, was it Rimmel or L'Oreal? I think it was L'Oreal. It's called like um, L'Oreal Super Liner or something like that. And what I do, if you want to do a wing, I always start with a wing first. So I would take my eyeliner pen and I would follow where my lower lash line is here and kind of draw a line up there and then the line that I draw down to connect it I would make sure it's pretty straight and so it's not going over the crease here I kind of just tuck it underneath and then join up the other bits and obviously if you want to make it thicker you can again if you guys want a full tutorial on it please let me know and I will do that for you when editing your videos is it better to use a laptop or a cell phone that sounds really weird because I'm English and we never say cell phone but um, it's definitely better to use a laptop obviously if you don't have a lot lot that's not a word <laughs> obviously if you don't have a laptop and you can't afford to go buy one don't go spend all your money on one just yet especially if it's for YouTube and you're not sure if you want to do it definitely test it out first um, there's a load of like apps and stuff you can get on your phone although I just don't think it does what you need like it's really hard to sync up the audio it's hard to add in effects if you have a laptop you have like a much bigger screen to work off of and someone else asked how do you find your correct foundation shade so a lot of people typically make the mistake of going to a store and putting the foundation on their wrist and matching up with the color of their wrist um, that is not going to get you the correct shade if you're going to a makeup store like debenhams or john lewis or anything like that and a lot of the time they can actually match you to the foundation although i'll be honest i don't particularly trust them because i've done that and they give me one that's orange yeah not cute so i would recommend going into the store and applying a couple of different shades onto your jawline just under here on your neck because when you blend your foundation you're going to be blending it down into your neck anyway so a lot of the time if your face is a lot lighter than your neck and you're getting something that matches your face you're going to have like a really pale face and a really tanned neck and that's not really what we want i mean you might but i wouldn't recommend it so i would typically match it to your neck walk around the store for about 10 or 15 minutes because some foundations do oxidize quite a lot so you might put one on and think oh this really matches me go home and be like why do i look like an oompa loompa so if you leave it 10 or 15 minutes that will give it a chance to oxidize it's going to do it and then you can see which one matches you best and that's the one that you should use really and that's pretty much it somebody else asked how do i stop liquid lipstick going cakey when i have to reapply i always find as soon as i top up a jeffree star lipstick it goes really thick and gross in the center of my lips um i do find that happens with a lot of liquid lipsticks and typically i just wouldn't recommend reapplying them i really really wouldn't if it's like a MAC bullet lipstick, um, it's okay. Basically, if it's a bullet lipstick, you're kind of okay with it. 
but with liquid lipsticks once it dries down you are going to get like really crusty butthole lips so I really wouldn't recommend reapplying those. I would just take it off and put it on again. However, if you are one of those people that you just don't have time and you do want to reapply it, then I say the main key is just to prep your lips first. Make sure you use an exfoliate and lip scrub. Use a lip balm and then apply it and that will kind of help keep the moisture in your lips so it doesn't dry up as fast. Another person asked, how do I get over a heartbreak? We were together for like three years and it's the only person I've ever truly loved. Damn. There's nothing you really can do to be honest. There just, there just isn't like If you're with someone for that long you are used to getting a routine You are used to seeing that person every day like it's gonna hurt it. It just will So the only thing that is gonna help you is to distract yourself I find so go out spend time with your friends find a hobby that you like doing find something that you can do by yourself that you enjoy that you can put like all of your energy into and just distract yourself and a lot of it i find isn't necessarily that like even if you do miss the person i think most of it is you miss what you used to do and you miss that routine of having someone there having someone to talk to and stuff like this so make sure you have friends and family you can talk to if for any reason you don't have anyone to talk to then you're welcome to message me on twitter and i will try and help in any way i can i think your best bet is just to try and find something to distract yourself that you love doing and to get yourself into a new routine to try and break that old cycle that you're so familiar with and the rest of it honestly you'll just you'll get over it in time it is going to take a while you might not be ready in like a week it might take three years like like eventually you'll be fine again and and honestly like you'll forget they ever even existed so it hurts now but trust me it will get better um someone else put how do i make sure my hamsters don't die i can't tell if this is a joke or not um i'd say give them water make sure you feed them <laughs> Um, don't let the cats play with them. I don't like what do you want me to say? <laughs> the one that you guys sent in was someone said I always feel so discreeted when I'm hanging out with my friends And I go away feeling really sad and unwanted, but I don't want to be alone without any friends. What do I do? Okay, so I actually had this problem a lot in school I had people that I would hang around with that I wouldn't necessarily say that I was close friends with and even like even in sixth form in college like it wasn't so bad after i moved but i found that groups are like very very clicky with each other and it's like well if you don't act like this i'm not your friend it's just very immature at that age unfortunately i think it's down to it if your friends are doing it on purpose or not if you believe that they're purposely just making you feel left out and like they don't want to be with you then i'd say probably find some new friends like in my opinion i'd rather have no friends than people that I hang around with who actually couldn't care less about me or my feelings. I just think that's really rude and not what a friend should do. So if they are purposely discluding you, I just say, chuck them in the bin. Like you don't need them. You're gonna find other people that are there for you eventually. And just don't waste your time on people like that. Like life is too short to be miserable. Um, I should probably listen to my own advice because oh my God, if you knew how many breakdowns I had because I can't get my camera to focus, you would be like, what's wrong with you? So if you think maybe they're discluding you but they don't necessarily mean to do it on purpose, maybe just sit down and talk to them. Like if they're your friend at the end of the day, they're gonna understand your feelings and they're gonna take the time to listen to you and cheer you up. Another person asks, how do you grow your YouTube channel? I don't know if I'm the best person to ask because I mean like I have like 600 subscribers, like I'm not even at a thousand yet. If you're watching this then come join the family and make it bigger because I work so hard. The thing is, a lot of people have their own opinion on this. A lot of people are like, copy the big YouTubers, do what they do, act overly enthusiastic. In my opinion, like, I just, I can't do that. Like, I'm not a really over enthusiastic, like, oh my God, like this and that. Like, I'm just not like that. I don't know what that impression was, but like, that's just not me. I'm very chilled out, I'm very laid back. I do have rest and bitch face. I probably do look miserable a lot of the time. I'm in fact quite happy. You don't know that, but that is the issue that I have. I'd say the main thing is just put the effort in. If you wanna do this, like I want this so bad. You have no idea. I love doing this more than anything. This is like my only hobby. So I kinda have to, but like make sure you're taking time to respond to your subscribers, any comments or anything like that. Take on board what people recommend to you. 
and like personally if someone even comments on my video i'm like i can't believe like they even took the time to watch me like i'm really grateful for that and just put their effort back into your videos think okay what products did i use list them below make everyone who's watching make their lives a bit easier for them i say make sure you share your videos on social media as well that's what i do i think i get about like i don't know like a good like 35% of my views from Facebook groups, especially with like makeup and beauty videos. Like it's just been done. There's like, thousands and thousands of channels out there on makeup. And everyone's like, what makes you stand out? I can't tell you that. I don't know. I'm just kind of here putting my stuff out there and hoping people like me and my personality. And if they don't, that's fine. But if they do, then great. So like, just be yourself, do what you want to do. But the main thing is just enjoy what you're doing. If you treat it like a job, you're going to get very tired out and very burned out very, very quickly. And it's just not going to go anywhere. So just make sure you like, make sure you love what you're doing. Otherwise, there's no point in it. And then the last question I have is, how do you be confident when you're in a hurry and only have time for a little makeup? Fake it. Honestly, just fake it like like do you really think i sit down here every day in front of a camera talking to myself and feel confident god no no i do not i feel stupid as hell i'm just there like talking to a camera like you know what i mean like just fake the confidence the thing is if you don't feel confident pretend that you are pretend to yourself that you're confident and eventually you get so used to faking the confidence within yourself that you'll believe it and when you believe that you are confident other people will believe that too so that's that's personally what I do and it seems to work so <laughs> and like you don't have to wear a lot of makeup to feel good you don't like odd die you probably don't need it I know that's a lot coming from me who wears it every single day not everybody has to wear makeup you don't have to have perfect skin you don't have to have like a really blocked eyebrows you don't have to have any of these things is what you feel comfortable in I think that's basically it for this video guys thank you for all of you who sent in all of your questions I hope this video has helped you or just made you feel a little bit better if like maybe some others are in this situation as well so if you do like the makeup look that i'm wearing today i have a full tutorial of this coming up on my channel soon if it's not already up it will be my back to school makeup tutorial so if you guys want to see that if it's already up i'll link the thing somewhere up here i don't know whereabouts it's going to be it'll be up here somewhere please make sure you are following me on twitter and if you like my video please subscribe to my channel it means so much to me and if you do subscribe to me please make sure that the bell icon is selected to all instead of personalized because youtube's been doing that recently by default and it means when i post a new video like nobody's gonna know that i posted so make sure it's selected to all for those notifications and yeah thank you guys for watching my video so so much and i will see you guys in the next one bye